tonight. It's a small little delay on the load screen here. But looks like we're going to get right back into it. So, guys, it's not a best of between these players. It's a best of one. But each of them is representing their respective country, where they hail from. And currently in this series, in this best of five between Canada versus United States, it is 1-0. Uh, Canada, of course, motivation there in chat did just secure the first game against America. So Canada currently leading the series. We'll see if America can bring it back. They're spawning in the top left corner of the map. Maybe you've heard of them. Maybe it's QXC. Of course, from complexity and representing America, freedom, and the United States. His opponent in the lower right, though, a guy you haven't probably heard of in quite some time, has started making his way back into the scene in a big way lately, playing for Root Gaming. It is the Canadian Terran, Massa. Who, fun fact, I ran into on League of Legends once, didn't realize it was him, got my ass handed to me. But that's neither here nor there, as we're focusing on StarCraft 2. Now, for the Nation Wars, I believe after this game, I could be mistaken, I'll, I'll obviously update between series. I believe after this game, though, we're going to actually have a 2v2 take place. And the 2v2 will be part of the map scores. It's not just like a for funsy thing, it's actually legitimately part of this. And it'll be Suppy and Hitman for Team America, and Hengelisk and Masa, who are watching right now, for Team Canada. Now, of course, Canada may have opened strong, but I'm not at all uh, putting it past QXC to bring it back. His TVT is nothing to be scoffed at. The thing about QXC2, or uh, if I could say his name properly, QXC, is that he's a very intelligent player. Like, it, if this was like a, like a, I don't know, like an MMO and you're like sorting stats and stuff, QXC's intellect would be through the roof. Because the one thing is like, I've seen him lose to players and then immediately, if he gets a chance to play them again, beat them the next time, like 100% of the time. Because A, he learns from his mistakes, B, he identifies uh, weakness when he does this. Uh, we'll see if he can get this first one versus Masa though. TVT is kind of a bit funny right now, too. A lot of players are leaning towards mech now. A lot of the players that used to be bio strictly and entirely, you know, it was just bio, bio, bio. No other way. No other questions. There's still players like Polt out there who don't ever really play bio. But even players like Taysha have started, started transitioning and adopting mech because it is quite strong now. Uh, not that there's been any immediate or crazy buffs. Uh, the ship weapons and ground weapons being combined is quite nice. But uh, we'll talk about that more if either player goes into mech. I actually really like Mech 2, just side note actually to that, I know I said we would talk about it more in a moment, is because, uh, man, you get so many Hellions as Mech, and it's so fun watching those flames go off, especially when they have the blue flame upgrade, but uh, Tech Lab coming out here on the barracks for QXC, I don't think this is going to be for a star port without that second gas. Is he just going to go for an earlier tank? Okay, never mind. Second gas now being taken. A little bit delayed. Um, Moss is, of course, a little bit faster, so a little bit more makes sense timing if you want to... Uh, Use some paraphrasing like that. Alright, both players looking to go for, uh, well, it might not even be a Banshee opening. A lot of the times, it used to be Banshee, 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 no question. And I think what happened was, like, the metagame kind of reached this point where in TVT it was kind of like, oh, your Banshee got there before mine, I lose. So players started adapting the mentality of going for Raven first into a Viking, into a Banshee later. So they have the defense of the capability to actually fight. Now I really like this Widowmine coming out of Masa. QXC we don't see making a Widowmine. This is actually great for catching a Viking. A Widowmine does not, I repeat, does not one-shot a Banshee, but it does get it incredibly low. And if you either bring the Widowmine, uh, like one thing Innovation does that I really like, is he'll always bring the Widowmine across the map and he'll try and bait his opponent's Viking into it. But we don't actually have Vikings or Ravens being made this time, just straight into Banshees with Cloak. Both for QXC and for Masa. So part of this kind of comes down to like whose Banshee gets to the other person's base first. Because the reality is like if your Banshee gets there first, you can just kind of set it and forget it with Cloak on. And uh, your opponent your opponent's going to have to like micro like crazy to dance around you. Uh, whereas if you're the defender and you're, you've, you can't even control your Banshee for moment one, you can't even position it in that, that, that nice sort of set and forget it spot. You'll have to dance around with whatever Marines, whatever Widowmines are capable or available to you. Uh, where did that Widowmine go for QXC or for Masa? Oh, hidden. Oh, on top of the refinery. I was trying to find it. That's pretty cool. I guess he is anticipating it to use it defensively. Raven's following up. Now, Ravens serve quite a few good purposes in this matchup. Number one, they provide detection. Okay, that's obvious. You don't have to burn scans. Fantastic. Secret missiles are cool, but they don't have as much damage as I think a lot of people uh, anticipate them do. It does take two to kill a tank. 
But uh, more importantly than that, Point Defense Drone is fantastic for Viking Wars. We'll talk about that later if it gets so. But the Banshee 4 QXC does get into Master Space first and actually manages to sort of circumvent its way around first the Widowmine. It's not because he's like a map hacker and he knows where it is. Uh, but unfortunately, <laughs> you stop me calling first blood for America. He's right about that. Uh, unfortunately, though, the SCV sort of building command center position, it did, did sort of bait it that way. QXC, in the meantime, did drive off the Banshee of Massa. And this is what I'm talking about. You can't afford to control your own Banshee when you're busy defending against your opponents. So, not that it's like a build order win by any means, but it's not something that uh, Massa is going to have a whole lot of fun dealing with. He's actually doing quite well at dancing around these Marines. Auto turret was thrown down at Amasa, but in a pretty awkward spot. It's not going to reach the Banshee. There's no real reason for the Banshee to be flying over that direction. Uh, did not cancel for a Viking. QXC did get his Viking out though in order to hunt the Banshee of Masa. <laughs> Looks like Masa's Banshee. What's going on over here? Yeah, it's just chilling above the base. <laughs> Uh, so QC gets a couple kills, gets on out. What's really nice about that? On top of four SCVs, he actually managed to kill seven Marines. And in and of itself, that's actually not that big of a deal because it's like Marines, whatever. They're able to siege tank, they can't push forward. But that means that Masa can't push forward himself. So QC is actually able to take a much more comfortably defensive stance. His command center is finished, whereas Masa's is still building. Basically, QXC is like one step ahead of Masa at this point, and he'll probably stay that way for quite some time. Now, what's nice about TVT is the way tank wars work. Uh, you might be behind right now, but as long as you have a good position and take a great fight, whether it's defensively or offensively, tanks can minimize, well, not minimize, but equalize, I should say, the losses that you've taken here in the early game. Uh, down actually quite a few SCVs, though. We'll see if that starts hurting or not. Sasquatch tuning in. Go Canada! <laughs> Sasquatch is American. So, Suppy. And Cena Cider. Uh, Cena is a bit of a betrayer, I guess. Another Banshee coming across the map for QXC. Actually, I think it's the same one just repaired up. Uh, no, it's fresh. Got zero kills. Where did the veteran Banshee go? Alright, whatever. Anyways, uh, looks like Hitman, or sorry, not Hitman. Masa does start getting some kills here. Not a whole lot, mind you, but enough to uh, draw the attention of QXC's Raven and the Viking over. Although, rather than kill it, decides to retreat for some odd reason. Weird dancing going inside the uh, natural base. Watchtower being controlled by QOT is kind of a big deal, too. Star Station is a deceptively large map, but it does have four watchtowers at the north, east, south, and west position. So it's pretty easy to get control and make sure that no drops are coming, that you don't get caught off guard. Now, it looks like Masa has actually elected to go into mech. This is okay. This works. Uh... QXC also playing Max. So this is what I wanted to talk about earlier, but I didn't want to waste everyone's time with if this wasn't going to be the case. We're going to see a lot of Hellions involved with this. We're going to see a lot of tanks involved with this. But more importantly than that, what we're going to need to see is a lot of Vikings involved with this. A big part of that is, of course, air superiority is everything. Once you get to, like, the 20-minute mark in the game and you've got, like, you know, 15 command centers, orbitals, whatever, and you can scan like crazy, no. Air dominance is not as big of a deal. But uh, the fact that QXC has actually managed to retain his Banshees, I think, will come into a greater effect later on, as uh, Banshees do kill tanks quite nicely. And if there's no Vikings in the air for Masa and no Marines because he's primarily got Hellions and tanks, then he's going to have no fun dealing with this in the later game. Now, Banshee inside the natural start kills uh, up to three so far. Should be driven back. Might even be killed out of this, actually, if he's not careful. Auto turret, a little bit of a desperation move here out on Masa. Point Defense Drone, of course, does affect anything with a projectile, so it's not a bad alternative, but the Point Defense Drone actually kills the Banshee instead of just simply nullifying where the damage can go down. Uh, looks like the Eastern Watchtower has been cleared out by QXC, so 13 kills on this one Banshee. Holy schmoly! That uh, Banshee's doing pretty good for itself. Uh, so the reason you see a lot of Hellions, too, whether your opponent's going for Bio or whether they're also going for Mech, one of the big things, of course, is that they're all light units on the ground. Bio, Marines, Hellions, you name it, they're all considered light units. Hellions, of course, are kind of like a, a very volatile glass cannon in this regard. Once you get Blue Flame up, which both players are researching right now, it becomes a bit of a, like, all right, who's in a better position to get a lot of AoE off fest? Because you can have tanks spreading a little bit of splash, not the biggest amount of damage, there's still splash going off. You'll see Hellions going off like crazy. And a little bit of a scuffle here. I'm sorry, I'm trying, I'm trying so hard here not to get distracted by players yet. Uh, what's really nice too, a big part of the Viking count, like I said before, area superiority is nice, but another big thing is they're armored units. They can actually land on the front lines and soak some of the Hellion hits without taking all that bonus damage. Now, yes, they will go down to tanks, but if you've got an excess of 15 Vikings, your opponent has two, landing them is not a bad idea. Uh, but looks like a bit of an engagement in the middle of the map. Not one Masa necessarily wants to take. He is not in position with his tanks. He does have a hell of a lot of tanks, though. Six to six. They are evenly matched in that regard. His Hellions are getting really darn low. Sometimes you actually don't seize your tanks for fights like this. As again, as we see, it's easy for QXC to just back up and run away. But losing the Hellion fight is going to cost him a couple tanks here, too. 
<laughs> Huck making the same reference someone in chat did earlier. The War of 1812. Ah, uh, this is actually really going to cost QXE here. Losing a couple tanks like this sucks. I mean, you don't take bonus damage from Hellions, but you still take the damage from the Hellions. Blue Flame finishes up a little bit earlier for QXE, but that's not going to matter a whole lot. Moss is starting to push a little too forward into his opponent's mineral lines. Uh, looks like Seeker Missiles are going to go off. This will kill those two tanks for sure. The splash damage is a hell of a thing to deal with. Yeah, two tanks do go down. Uh, looks like the air fight going to go in the favor of Moss. He gets that one extra hit off. Oh, but auto turret might just change that around. A bit of an uh, bit of an awkward push there. I think the Marines in that one tank were a little too far rallied forward. And it looks like Boss is just going to disengage off that. So he makes up that deficit in a big way and then some. Like I said, sometimes that little bit of a loss you take in the early games can suck. But as long as you take a good fight with tanks, with Hellions, get your positioning to be perfect, pristine. As we see, resources lost now in the favor of Masa. What's really scary too is uh, you got to consider, guys, like in in bio TVP or sorry TVT. I don't know ICP. Uh, when you lose your tanks, it's very hard to replace them. In mech TVT, where both players are going mech, killing the tanks isn't the end of the game like it is in the other uh, version of this matchup. Because by going mech, your opponent's going to have a ton of tanks to replace this with a lot of factory production too, instead of just barely two factories, a lot of five or six. Now uh, Masa is currently sitting on four. Once he takes to the third base, he may add another. Of course, tanks are so expensive gas-wise. Uh, this orbital will not get a chance to establish here. It looks like uh, a couple tanks can go down for both players. Bit of an awkward position here. Looks like Moss is going to lose his one tank just slightly before QXC loses his. But has range and has positioning on this orbital. Forces the lift off and will deny that third for a little bit. Now, three Hellions have skirted all the way the long way around the map. QXC expecting a third base to be down. Has no SUVs to kill. Uh, fortified here quite nicely is QAC actually. There's no way for Masa to really push into this. Not with the low count of units he currently has. And his rally point is actually scumbagging him over. Several Hellions keep trying to go through the natural entrance point instead of running through the south. Uh, but looks like this command center, oh, a bit awkward here. Scans it to make sure there's no tanks. There are no tanks, but there's a bunker going to drive this back. Uh, weapon upgrade is actually going to be in the favor here of QXE. Something that Masa has either neglected or forgotten about. His army is severely delayed. Uh, weapon upgrades do come into effect in a big way in this matchup, but not initially is the thing. Like, what level 1 upgrades versus level 0 upgrades, again, it's still going to take a tank, a lot of hits to kill other tanks or Hellions. It's not it's not like uh, tanks versus links, but eventually it comes into the point where Hellions are starting to do enough damage, tanks are hitting for just barely hard enough, and you start equalizing, if not destroying your opponent's army just with upgrades. But for now, 1-0 versus 0-0, it's not the biggest deal. Uh, we'll try and shut down this base, kind of a cute move here. Tank on that watch is providing a lot of really nice vision in. Ooh, nice Hellion hits here. Means he's getting right on top of the tank. And tanks, of course, do have that dead zone to worry about. Viking going to try and add some damage to this, but unfortunately, a Viking doesn't add a whole lot. Might still just barely be enough? No, he decides to lift it up to be safe. So third base being uh, denied here on the pocket corner of the base. Lots of tanks guarding this to prevent a push forward, but unfortunately, Masa doesn't have the pushing power to kill this base. If he had a Banshee alive, here we go. Coming in, we'll finish off this tank. We'll kill the other. And this is what I was talking about earlier, guys. Retaining your Banshees from the early game, it's not worth going like, YOLO, I'll get four CV kills at the very least. Uh, so looks like with the Hellions getting in here, we'll fry some SCVs alive at the third base. Oh god. Oh, this is gonna hurt QXE. Looks like the Banshee from... Yeah, Banshee from QXE will push this off. Moss is gonna lose his Banshee, unfortunately, here. Don't like that positional giveaway, but... Uh, third base from Moss has been established now. Not exactly ahead on SCVs, but of course QXE did just get gutted. How many works have been killed so far? Wow, Masa killed 30 SCVs. QXC killed 10 with his Banshee Harass. This is Masa literally saying, here's three times the payment back. Oh, pretty good game so far, but it's nothing close to over. Not, if, not as long as QXC doesn't give away a push like this. If Masa... Well, huh. I was trying to think. Like, Moss has got a really good defense little position, defensive position, but look at this. Not a lot of anti-air. The Viking can't cover this. And this is where you start seeing people incorporate Thors. Now, Masa already started building the Thors, but not quite done yet. He's going to lose two or three tanks to this before they're even available to come fight. Banshees are light units, guys. Don't forget. So they do take the bonus damage from Thors. Vikings do not. Uh, I'm not sure why QXC's not micro though. He could have killed three tanks there. Instead, it looks like he's just going to get away with having killed one. Uh, really unfortunate for QXC there. Now Moss can start repairing up if he wants to. Should probably try and do this. Engineering basement place down. And one of the things in TVT that you see, you don't see so often in other matchups. Well, I thought this was a straight up third. I missed this. His his main was evacuated to become the third. So kind of kind of economically advantaged as far as the minerals goes, but he's still only on four gases, which is really gonna suck playing mech. 
But a tank line, so again, they're not secured by anti-air. You can't rely on Thors, even though they're cool and they're big. Uh, they're actually not the best at fighting in these sort of scrap fights. So typically what you'll see Terran players do is, you know, you get your siege tank line up for sure, that's fantastic. Then you put a line of turrets either behind or in front of it, so you have somewhere more safe to engage around. Now he doesn't have the Watchtower, but he did sacrifice a Hellion and sees this army coming. He should be able to siege up preemptively. Yeah, QXC not going to be able to take this fight too easily, not too one-sidedly. The Hellion fights seem to be going in the favor of Monster for a lot of these little scraps. Two Hellions do make it over here to the north and evacuate out of these CSCVs. Uh, actually, not a, uh, there we go, QXC's reinforcements will clean this up. So again, kind of pushed off mining, but QXC's on four bases at this point. Moss is realistically only on two. A little bit worried about this. Uh, Auto turrets actually killing some of the SCVs here at the natural base of QXC as well. How many kills does Raven have? Wow, up to 55 workers killed so far this game. This Raven has secured 15 kills. And remember guys, this was like that defensive Raven mid very early. So it's been definitely getting its money worth here in the game. Uh, looks like we do have a drop ship full of four Hellings moving towards the main base of Masa, but little does QXC know there's nothing for him to kill there. <laughs> so stupidly awkward to consider. Uh, meanwhile, pushing around the northern part of the map, Masa actually does not have knowledge. Oh, he does have knowledge of that third, fourth base being up, so never mind, take that back. Uh, Banshee gonna go down, unfortunately, ran out of juice to cloak, no juju in that regard. Tank's gonna push forward. Oh no, the Thors, don't give away the Thors like this, Masa, what are you doing? Oh no! So that's, that's literally 100% of the anti-air Masa has available to him. Now forced to fall back. Hellions dropped inside the third base instead of the main. And it looks like a double drop, actually. His two Hellbats went towards the natural. So while this was going on, Masa got a little bit gutted. And kind of understand why the Thors were given away now. He probably was not watching them at all. And uh, very unfortunate in that regard. The very expensive units he needed to keep for this game. Meanwhile, middle of the map is another Tango going down. Siege Tank is going to soak a lot of these hits, but gets killed eventually. It's so hard to call Blue Flame Hellion Wars, guys, because all it takes is moving one Hellion ever so slightly to suddenly change the way that battle goes. But one thing QXC is getting right now is Hellbats. And the reason Hellbats are going to be fantastic is Hellbats are what let you push into your opponent's tank line. It looks like Raven's finally going to be pushed out. Did try and go for another auto turret on this fickle thing. But yeah, so uh, Hellbats have 135 health. They're light units, so they can actually soak tank fire much more effectively than Hellions or Thors even can. That being said... Uh, Hellions actually do a lot better damage against Hellbats than Hellbats do against Hellions because you can kite them around to an extent. Uh, that's not a good engagement here for QXC, but he's still going to take it nonetheless. He's going to lose a lot of tanks, but the Hellions are going to actually do enough soaking, it looks like, to make this worthwhile. So loses some tanks, loses some Hellions. Masa did try and go for an attack here at the corner base, the pocket base. Got some kills, but looks like Canada is not doing so well. Good game is called QXC for Eagles Freedom and America. We'll take game number.